think we're good. Yeah, we're rolling. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the first tournament vlog recap of 2024, where I just recently played in the Battle for the Osage Hills, which was a two round B tier held at The Lodge, which is two of Oklahoma's highest rated courses designed by Avery Jenkins. We've got the Moccasin Creek course and the Island course. Now getting right into the swing of things, before I even played in this tournament, I came up with four very distinct goals for myself that I believe would help me achieve victory. The first of four goals that I came up with was that I wanted to be the highest rated MA1 player in our division, which at this time would have been Max Wicks, who is the recently proclaimed best amateur player in the state of Oklahoma. But unfortunately, Max decided that he just didn't want to play at the lodge this weekend, I guess. I don't know. Uh, it's up for speculation. I think that he got scared and didn't want to actually play against any of us. But all speculation, I'll let him defend himself in the comments. But of course, with Max not being there, that meant I had to find a new target. That target was none other than Damien. And for those that are new here, Damien was actually a former partner on the channel. Of course, that made things just a little more personal. All right, going into goal number two for the tournament. Hard, but achievable. I wanted to go bogey free both rounds. Now, for the island course, I knew there was one hole in particular that would come between me and that goal. Goal number three. I wanted to make sure that I shot at least a 970 rated event. This is for two reasons. One, I am currently trying to qualify for the Am World Championships for 2025. And secondly, I knew that if I could shoot a 970 rated event, it would put me at a great advantage of trying to close out the tournament with a win. And then lastly, that brings us to goal number four. And it's probably the most important goal going into any tournament, especially after some of the tournaments I had last year. And that's to have fun. Uh, for a long while, there was a stretch of tournaments that I played in where I did not prioritize having fun. I tried too hard for score. And when you do that, you kind of set yourself up in a position where it's really easy to get upset. And I just don't like being in that headspace. So that's goal number four, most important of all of the goals. Now, my tournaments lately, let's just say they've started out less than ideal. So I knew that if I wanted to have any chance at taking home a victory on this one, I knew that I needed to come out and make a statement early. And that is exactly what I did. At this point, I am five down. Damien's only one down after a couple of mistakes on the front nine. But we're both going into hole 11, which is hole 17 on the course, or the island hole. The only hole that I mentioned in the introduction would be in the way of me going bogey free for the entire round. This is how it went. Ooh. Unfortunately, I didn't make the island, which meant I had to proceed to the drop zone. But before I could even make my approach down the hill, Damien did this. Oh, that's gone. No. That's in there. Stay. Good, Good shot, Damien. With that, Damien still left with a putt for the birdie. And I knew that if I could throw this in and save my par, I'd have a great chance of staying in the lead by four strokes. Yeah, there's absolutely no way I'm running that. If you think I had that thought in my head for even a second, you're out of your mind. With that, Damien does this. Nice too. Now with him tapping in that birdie and I'm tapping in a bogey, it brings him right back into the game. Just a two stroke lead going into hole 12, which is hole 18 on the course. And hole 18 is where things get interesting because Island Course has several gold pads you can play from. You know, the championship level stuff. With that in mind, I'm gonna take the time to mention, on the caddy book, we all remember seeing it said to play blue. Now upon closer inspection, while making this video, not only does it say to play blue, 
but it also says to play gold. Now, of course, we're working off the momentum of the previous hole. I just took a bogey, Damien just took a birdie, and we're both looking to score. Hole 18 is very attackable. Now, at the time, following the card ahead of us, we went up to the blue pad. We didn't check, but the PDGA scoring app definitely said that we were supposed to play from gold. All of that to say, this becomes extremely important later on in the video. Now, of course, like I mentioned, Damien just took a birdie and I just took a bogey. I knew that if I wanted to beat Damien, I needed to take away the momentum and bring it back to me. And that's exactly what I did. Now sitting at nine down, two holes to play, I made the regrettable decision to look at scores. The next two holes I knew were very attackable, with the first being hole five, a 555 foot par four, where I threw a great drive about 450 feet off the tee, leaving me with this little baby up shot. So when I saw that I was nine down and I had a putt, even though it was a 10 footer, something about being double digits under par just gets to my head. And I doink it. Oh, there it is. That's okay though, because hole six is one of the holes I consider a musket. It's basically a measly 240 foot chip forehand shot where I throw my fireball And although it doesn't get the skip I want, it puts me just inside the circle. Easy, right? 26 footer to put me 10 down on the round and have a comfortable three stroke lead going into round two. Nope. Now with that, I finished with a one stroke lead going into round two. My attempt at going bogey free for both rounds went a little unrealized, but we can move the goalposts a little bit. And so we're gonna aim for going bogey free on Moccasin Creek. Now before that, of course, I would like to mention that the rest of my goals are intact. My first round came in at an official rating of 993. I also had a three stroke lead on Damien and most importantly, I was having fun. At this point I realized whether or not I want this tournament is entirely up to me. I knew that my contenders weren't just gonna let me walk away with it. And that's when I decided to completely forget the blunders that were the last two holes of my round one and to come out attacking as soon as round two starts. And that's exactly what I did. I opened round two by throwing a great opening tee shot. Following that by throwing my approach underneath the basket to tap in an early birdie. Hole two, I throw my shot a little wide, but still plenty well enough to make my approach. Farthest drive on the hole, but the first to putt. All right, so bogey free, clearly not happening. So we gotta make a new goal, win. Hole three, I put my shot in range for a jump putt, but don't quite commit. We take our par and move on. However, the rest of the front nine is where I make my move by getting four of the next six, starting with hole four. I throw a lackluster drive off the tee, but once I approach the green, I felt my putting stroke from round one return, ready to score. Hole five, I somewhat find my way up the hill. More importantly, I find a way to put this putt in the bottom of the basket. Hole six and seven, I tap out pars. But on hole eight, I find my way back to another birdie.
and then on hole nine. I do it again. Now, once we get into the back nine, I pretty much hit a wall. I can't quite put myself in birdie position off the tee, but I'm also not putting myself at jeopardy of taking a bogey. So from there, I par holes 10 through 16. And once again, hole 17 is where things get interesting. Now, if you remember, I played hole 18 of Island Course from the blue tee pad. At this point, I assumed I'd be taking a two stroke penalty due to playing from the wrong tee pad, meaning I had a two stroke lead with two to play and hole 17 is hard. It's a 480 foot par three with water on the left all the way up to the basket. And the basket is precariously lingering on a mound that is surrounded by that water on one side. My drive is less than ideal, but neither was Kanan's, who at the time was the only person I thought could catch me at this point. From my lie, rather than get aggressive, I decided to play the safe layup, with the intention of laying up for bogey. Which would have been the perfect plan if Kanan didn't absolutely drain a 40-footer to save his par. One stroke, and that's all I had going into 18. Now hole 18 is a 655-foot par 4. Off the tee, the only goal is to get past the rocks that play about halfway between the tee pad and the basket. I did that with ease, and all I had to do was get up and down for the birdie to secure the win. Too low. However, Kanan's shot was also short. There was only one thing left for me to do, which was to play my shot as close to the basket as possible to force Kanan to make the putt to force the playoff. With that putt missed, all scores submitted, including my two stroke penalty, I win by one stroke and get this sweet trophy. From there, I get in my car and start driving home. Happy ending, right? Wrong. Remember when I said hole 18 on the island course would play a major part in this video? Well, on my way home, a decision was made. An important one. Apparently, the PDGA scoring app was supposed to have hole 18 on the island course listed as blue. But of course, that didn't happen. Now, under normal circumstances, the only penalty that should have been issued was a two-stroke penalty for those of us that played blue because the PDGA scoring app said that it was gold. However, the TD made a decision to allow those that played from the gold pad to play from blue and update the score that they took on the hole. Truthfully, this isn't a thing, but it happened. And it's important because one of the players that played the hole from the golds, Matthew Clark, took a five. If he were to take a two, it would mean that we would tie. Now imagine my surprise as I'm driving home from the course to refresh scores to check my rating and see this. That's right, Matthew Clark wasn't tied with me. No, in fact, he beat me. Heart attack, to say the least. Did I steal somebody else's trophy? I really wasn't sure what to do. I was pretty much all the way home and the course was about 50 minutes from me. I had no intentions of driving back, just simply to relinquish the trophy that I thought was mine. However, as soon as I pulled into my driveway, I received a call from the TD, who informed me that there was a scoring issue, that when the scores were finalized and submitted, for some reason it put Matthew ahead of me, even though he ended up taking a three after replaying the hole, meaning that I did actually win. <sighs> I can breathe again. And with that, I accomplished not only my initial three goals, plus the new one of winning, meaning I beat the highest rated player in the division with both rounds completed, having an official event rating of 982 and having the most fun at any tournament that I have ever had to date. But yeah, with that, my tournament recap is over. If this is something that you're interested in seeing more of, comment down below if you're new. Do consider giving us a like and subscribe, it helps a lot. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.